Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 Update, April 16th, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Here are the current trajectories. Take-home points. United States is closing in on 700,000 cases. There are over 2 million cases worldwide. Current trajectories zoomed in on Canada. Canada appears to be flatter compared with the other countries. Here are the reported cases per million population. Italy, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. Take-home points, Germany and Canada seem a bit flatter trajectories compared with the other countries in terms of cases per million population. Here are the percentage of deaths. United Kingdom is highest at 13.32%. Germany is low at 2.94%. Canada around 4%. The United States just over 5%. Here are the uh, deaths on the last uh, six days. The first number at the top is the most recent day. Take-home points. Deaths seem to be picking up a little bit in Canada. We had 181 today. United States is at over 10,000 deaths in the last three days. United Kingdom and France are still climbing. Germany is now starting to increase. And Italy and Spain have certainly not fallen greatly. They're still grumbling along. Here are the deaths per million population. Take home point here. Canada is still under the United States, but we had a slight uptick over the last couple of days. We'll have to keep an eye on this. Here are the estimated reproduction numbers. This is over a seven-day period. You'll see that all of the countries over seven days are below one in terms of uh, the reproduction number, and if we, uh, which means they're getting fewer and fewer cases each day. And if we zoom in on Canada here, we'll see that Canada is certainly the lowest after at day 35 after 150 cases. Another way to look at that, here are the new cases per day. And Italy and Germany and Spain have come over the hump. Canada, United States, United Kingdom, and France are just cresting the hump. They've had a few more cases the last few days. If we look at uh, new cases per day in all the countries, this is Italy, Spain, and Germany all seem to have flattened off. France is still quite erratic. United Kingdom, United States still seems to be growing. And Canada, which is underneath everybody else. Here are the daily deaths. Italy. Spain certainly have both flattened. Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States has had a quite a few deaths the last few days, and Canada. And the only concerning thing here is Canada's just bumped above Germany now at this point in time, which we haven't really done before. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Here are the new cases per day in Canada. We had 1,550 today. And you can see that Canada is kind of rolling along here up and down. So although we hope we'd flatten here and come down, we certainly had an uptick the last uh, a few days. Now this might be due to increase in testing though. We are, however, grinding along. Here's us versus South Korea and the United Kingdom. We're certainly much higher in South Korea, but not nearly as high as the United Kingdom. And you can see us just slowly grinding along there. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. Here's Canada at over 30,000. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, closing on 10,000. Quebec has now surpassed 15,000. Look at the other provinces. Nova Scotia is certainly increasing cases day by day. All of the other provinces seem to have flattened off. Here are the deaths of the four largest provinces. Canada with almost 1,200 deaths. Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario now with over 400 deaths, and Quebec has had a sharp uptick over the last couple of days, and now there are over 600 deaths. Sir Winston Churchill said after a battle against the Germans early in World War II, now is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. And I think that a lot of people around the world feel this about the spread of COVID-19, unfortunately. So let's talk about the spread of COVID-19. Population density is definitely a factor in this pandemic, as it has been in previous ones. The clustering of people in cities that make us innovative and productive, unfortunately, makes us more vulnerable. But population density is just one of a key number of factors as to why COVID-19 spreads. So let's think about where it spread and see if we can figure out what factors affect it. Well, first is superstar cities, New York and London. They have large flows of visitors, tourists, and dense residential areas. And then you've got industrial cities like Wuhan in China, Detroit, and Northern Italy. And these are heavily connected through supply chains. And then we've got global tourist sites like Italy, Switzerland, and France in the ski areas in those countries. 
And then in smaller communities, we've got confined spaces like nursing homes and funeral parlors and cruise ships, which is really a dense small city at sea. So what are the three factors that we can take from all of this about the spread of COVID-19? They are the density of people, the movement of people, and the confinement of people. So where will COVID-19 spread thinking about those factors? It's not just about density, but the kind of density or the movement in that density. So cities where people can work remotely, they can stay at home and have deliveries brought, like Manhattan in the United States, has limited the spread. But in other places where people have to go to work, they have to take transit and go to stores like the Brooklyn or the Bronx in New York, have had a lot more spread. So it's, they're both dense places in New York. One has movement, the other one doesn't have as much movement. It's also best transmitted when people are close, when they live in congested households or they work in congested workplaces, such as hospitals with healthcare workers or any other frontline staff dealing with the public. Unfortunately, nobody is ultimately immune to the spread. It will eventually spread to rural communities. So thinking about rural communities, you'd think that maybe they'd be a safe haven because they're not as dense in population. But the problem is that people in rural communities tend to move around a lot. They move around a lot for their job and they move around a lot for community gatherings and gathering in their workplaces, religious gatherings, nursing homes and funerals. And we've seen this in rural United States. If you look at seasonal flu data as well from the uh, United States, more people die in rural areas than they do in urban centers. Why is that? Well, in rural United States, people tend to be poorer and less well-educated. They are further from healthcare and they typically have more underlying health conditions. And furthermore, rural communities lack health infrastructure of large urban centers. So if you look at this graph on the y-axis is new cases and on the x-axis is time, and this is really what the new cases and time looks like for COVID-19. This is a normal distribution that's skewed to the right. You've got a sharp uptick on the left and then a long tail on the right-hand side. And that first uptick is called the bump. And we've gone through that and that's taken you know a month or two to get up to, to the top. And now we're unfortunately in something called the grind, which is gonna take a whole lot longer. And this is as this we social distance and this ultimately spreads around our, our communities. So remember for the spread of COVID-19, contact rate is the key. And remember the three letters, DMC. D means density. You don't wanna be around too many people or in dense areas. Movement. You don't want to move around too much or be around people that move around too much. And finally, C is for confinement. This virus is spread better in confined spaces when a lot of people are around. Here are the graphs from John Byrne Murdoch at the Financial Times. Again, there's six graphs. The first three graphs are the total number of cases per deaths. And the last three graphs are the average daily cases or deaths over a seven day period. The United States is now approaching 700,000 cases. Turkey here is still battling a severe outbreak. And Japan is going to pass South Korea over here as not total number of cases. Let's look at the total number of deaths. Take home points. The United States up here has now has uh, the highest number of deaths at over 20,000. Australia is still flattening out and looking pretty good. Uh, and the United Kingdom is still trending above Italy. Canada continues to kind of grumble along and slowly grow in the number of deaths. Here are the subnational numbers of deaths, take home points here. New York curve is tapering, but is now past Lombardy for the world's highest subnational death toll. New Jersey and London are still sloping upwards and likely to pass Catalonian hospital death toll. Here are the average number of cases per day, take home points. The United States and the United Kingdom appear to be peaking, although we can't speak too early because they've had a few more cases the last few days. Again, the Fab Four, Austria, Norway, Australia, New Zealand, all look still pretty good. And China is still grinding along off to the right-hand side there. Here are the average number of daily deaths. Take home points here. United States and United Kingdom continue to climb. Australia, Norway, and Austria are still success stories and look good. And Canada, unfortunately, is still back uh, growing a little bit. And this is the subnational region, number of daily uh, deaths. Take home points. New York daily deaths look to be peaking. London, England also looks to be peaking, but other areas in the United States and many states still look to be trending upwards. So remember, folks, it's now more important than ever than to hold the line. Keep that virus in. Remember, density, movement, confinement. 
You can go to collinsclothiers.com under Canada Strong, get one of these awesome hoodies or t-shirts to support your local small businesses and frontline workers. You can also visit Bill at thephysiotherapyroom.com to get some great personal protective equipment. Remember, do your part to flatten the curve. Stay home, stay safe, and please save lives.